Starting off, I thank God for good, godly women who hold it down. My Aunt Rebecca did the best she could. She held it down, raised five boys. All of them are college educated. She did, as the Bible says, what she could. Uh, but my experience with women down through the years, uh, and uh, in ministry and so forth, I have found out that many Christian women uh, have a hard time praying as they should if they're by themselves and they're left holding the bag and they got to do it and, and they got to deal with Junior. Y'all don't hear me. Five-year-old Junior who won't sit still. See, see, my Juniors, uh, if I'm around, oh, oh, oh they're going to sit still. But I'll be quite frank with you, my, my wife can't handle those children like I can. And, 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 uh, and not only are they going to sit still, they're going to pray. They need your help. They need your leadership. That wife will pray like a champion if she can see, if she would see her husband praying. She needs for you, sir, to lead in prayer. Why? Because God has put something in that woman to really want to follow her husband. I say, you say, preacher, I don't believe that. Well, uh, I, I'm here to tell you that's the truth. The Christ in her wants to follow her husband. And so, husbands, you have to lead in the spiritual discipline of prayer. I don't care if it's ten minutes in the morning. If your schedule is that tight, you can't pray. Take five minutes. Even if the children are half asleep with their head hanging over the bowl of cereal, pray with your family. Put your hands on them and anoint them and protect them through prayer. Husbands, you not only have to pray for your family, you also have to pray with your family. Now, ladies and gentlemen, by the grace of God, I have a 21-year-old who is wrapping up her college career, and uh, by the grace of God, I thank the Lord that that child has not known, and, and my other six children have not known a day where they have not seen their father pray with them. Even though most of my 30 years of ministry have been on the road as a full-time evangelist, they have seen me pray, they have heard me pray, and they have heard me every day call their name out to God. And my wife will admit to you that she would not lead in prayer as much as I do if I, and has admitted when I've had to be gone, and she struggled with that. And so help your wife, gentlemen, uh, sir, rather, and gentlemen, help your wife in that area. And wives, you need to pray for your husband when he's gone. If you don't, he might be sending pictures somewhere. He might be texting somebody he has no business, uh, business texting or sexting. You need to pray for your husband. There are a whole lot of hoochie mamas out there who would love to have your husband. They just want him for a little while. <clears throat> Y'all don't hear me. And as I mentioned before, you both must pray with and for your children. Now let me share something that will be a great blessing to you as a couple. Make a concrete decision to pray together in the morning before you go your separate ways. I do not care how busy you are. I do not care what you have on your agenda. Take the time to pray together in the mornings before you part ways. Don't let it slip by you. Don't let the devil take that away from you. 
you must pray together. The devil is constantly working, and after you have been asleep all night, if you don't quickly get in communication with God, I guarantee you the devil will try to get something in between you. I have learned over the years that the days I slip up in prayer or try to get some other things done before I pray, you know how it is. Uh, with my family or by myself, the devil tries to get in between my wife. And let me tell you a little trick uh, uh, between my wife and me over absolutely nothing. That's right, you know what I'm talking about. You need to pray in the mornings together as soon as possible after waking, after waking up. And uh, let me tell you a little trick that the devil plays on most of us. If you're determined to pray, God, I'm here to tell you the devil will give you 101 things that he wants you to do before you pray. Be careful with that. Excuse me. Another critical time for prayer is in the evenings. I'm talking about home life now. Right before the husband get, uh, uh, is on, uh, comes home, right before you all get back together. Husbands, while you are driving home, you need to be praying something like this. Lord, thank you for this good day. Lord, fill me now with your Holy Spirit. Fill my wife with your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we pray that, I pray that you will rebuke and bind Satan, the devil, from our home. Surround us with a band of your holy angels. Now, Lord, help us to have a good and sweet evening together as a family. Bless my children. Help them to be obedient and cooperative. Husbands, you need to do that. And wives, while your husband is doing that on the way home, you need to be praying along the same lines. Now, you try it before you think I'm crazy. I guarantee you, you will have a different atmosphere in your home. For those of you who might be single, you need to pray as well. I have had single people uh, share with me how hard it is to pray alone. I know. I was single once myself. But it's equally hard in marriage. Remember, the grass is not greener on the other side. You cannot allow your happiness and your joy and your peace to depend on your future wife or your future husband or your circumstances. Your happiness Ladies and gentlemen, your joy and your peace of mind. And I want to tell you something, folks. There's nothing like peace of mind. Must be found in Jesus Christ, in God, and God alone. In Isaiah we read, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. By keeping your mind on Jesus Christ, you are guaranteed perfect peace. And one way you can keep your mind on God and on Jesus Christ is through having times of regular prayer. Daniel prayed three times a day. David prayed three times a day. Nehemiah tells us the joy of the Lord is your strength. Not the joy of your wife, not the joy of your husband, and not the joy of your children or anyone else. And you can have consistent, consistent joy and peace by keeping your heart and mind stayed on God if you pray consistently. The psalmist David tells us, Blessed, happy is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. You, you'll get genuine happiness, not from your spouse or from others, but from obeying the Lord. And prayer will help you to be consistent in obeying God, and hence 
have continual happiness. Once you get a hold of this, once you get a hold of this, it will free you to be a better person. I have already determined in my heart and mind, and I know that it would be tough, that if something were to happen to my wife or to one of my children, and one of them were to leave me by death, I have determined that I would keep on praying and serving God. We need to pray as husbands and wives. We need to pray as single people. We need to just pray. Not play, pray, because these, ladies and gentlemen, are praying times. Not only that, but we need to pray for our churches. We need to pray for our pastors. Haven't you found out that when you pray for your pastor throughout the week, you uh, normally uh, won't have uh, anything negative to say about him or listen to anybody else say something neg negative about him? Did you know that a person can come to church and if he or she isn't prayed up, he or she can have a negative attitude toward the man of God or toward a fellow church member for no reason at all? Have you ever had a friend or someone in authority over you, be it a pastor or whoever, and everything was all right between you and that person, but somehow you had something negative to develop in your heart toward that person for no reason. Isn't that interesting? Dear friend, there's nothing but the devil trying to cause division. You need to pray. We need to pray to God to help us to love one another. We need to pray to God to help us to get along with one another. I have been in churches where a person will wait by the piano all uh, evening if he has to so as not to shake a particular person's hand. Uh, you've seen them before, the ducking and dodging brothers and sisters. I mean, they will do all kinds of calisthenics and, and, and maneuvers to avoid any contact with that person they don't want to uh, talk to. These things ought not so to be. If they are so, you need to pray about it. You need to pray about your attitude. You need to pray about your spirit. You need to pray and ask God to help you to love all your brothers and sisters in Christ, not based upon uh, what they do or say or have done and said, but because they are your brothers and sisters in Christ. I remember one time when I was in Imperial, California, preaching at a meeting. It was a predominantly white church with a few minorities. And I was supposed to, to preach that Sunday morning. Uh, when I walked in uh, the services, they had another brother, a dear Mexican brother, teaching the Sunday school class right before the main service. When I sat down, I was kind of surprised and immediately, without any effort of my own, the thought came across my wretched mind. Now how can this person, and mind you this is years ago, I've gotten over this, how can this person teach me anything? He's uh, probably illegal. What can he teach me? Before you condemn me, examine your own heart. 